So I'm here in the Royal Academy of Engineering with uh, Dame Anne Dowling, who's the first female president of the Royal Academy, who's been tasked with a, a review of business university collaboration, particularly research collaboration. So could you tell us why this review is important, Anne? I, I think it's, uh, it's really important. Um, we, we have some fantastic business university research collaborations um, in the UK, um, but it's patchy. And um, I've recently been um, chairing uh, the um, engineering, physical sciences and mathematics um, panel in the, um, in the REF, in the Research Excellence um, Framework. And there we saw many excellent case studies of um, big impacts that had come through collaboration between universities and business. Um, but the same businesses come up time and time again. <laughs> uh, and they're getting so much out of it. Um, and it's clear that if we, if we could, could get other companies of the same um, character, size and scale, uh, aligned in a similar way, with the research base in universities, it would be so great for the UK. And is the scope of it mainly big companies or is it also mid-sized mid and small no, companies? No, our, our remit is uh, all sizes of uh, companies and across all sectors. Mm. And of course it's quite different for SMEs um, to engage with, with, with the university base. They haven't got the time to put in yeah. that a large company you know, can. So it's certainly not one solution fits all. So, and how are you going to get evidence about the relationship between business and university and researchers? Well, we, we have issued a call for evidence and, and we're really hoping uh, that to get lots of responses to that. I mean, the crucial questions that we're asking, whether it, it, it's of academia or business, is have you involved, been involved in these kind of collaborations? If so, what would really make a difference to scale it up? And if not, what, what would cause you to get involved? What have been the obstacles? I mean, one of the things that surprises me is, is the policy gap around companies that turn over 100, 150, 200 million. Well, they do have time and resources, and yet most of the focus is either on the big or the micro. Uh, will the, the mid-cap absolutely be clearly part of your remit? Definitely. And um, uh, there is a lot uh, of, of benefits for companies in that size range who are often thinking and ready and ripe to scale up uh, and um, getting access to a really strong... Uh, research base can be part of extending their portfolio. And as you said, uh, the, the same companies come up time and again, Rolls-Royce, BP, BA Systems. Um, uh, the industry that I come from, which is the creative and digital industries, where I was at the BBC, we seldom use the university system either in our technology research or in fact any other part of our research agenda. Do you think there's a reason for that? Well, I, I think it's changed because there are aspects of the uh, creative um, industries and, and one thinks of some of the special effects and uh, animations who are heavily engaged with a really um, leading edge activity that we have in the UK um, uh, around, uh, around IT. So um, it depends on which part of the creative industries. Um, I think it's fair to say that those companies that have come out of a traditional engineering kind of background probably are, uh, they, maybe they've been engaging with universities for longer and have more processes in place to do it. Um, but some of our most successful and fast growing uh, companies are in creative industries and they need high level technology as well. So there, there is a good synergy there and, and more can happen in that space. And I was very struck when we did our review of, of innovation at the National Centre of University and Business that construction really struggles to engage with universities. But also we've just finished one on the food economy and the food sector seems to struggle as well. Mm -hmm. uh, and and it's, it's, these are just historic things that we can overcome by good practice? Um, construction really has changed. And um, if, if I speak with... Um, um, before I became president of the academy, I was head of um, engineering in Cambridge, and we've had a really strong engagement with the construction industry. But it's only started over the last few years, uh, because again, there's a business that's had been really quite traditional in it, it, its manufacturing and supply chain um, techniques. And um, Ray O'Rourke had a real vision to change the industry, and he's he's turned to working with the universities as a way of, of, of really making a change in what has been a very traditional industry. So there, it, in all these cases, change has happened because of one or two um, people 
who have a strong vision of where their company or their sector might go. Um, and when they share that long-term vision with the universities, it really kicks off some really exciting imaginative research. And part of what the review that I've been asked to uh, uh, chair will be looking at is how do we get industry sharing their long-term vision with academia, which is quite different from just kicking off a, one PhD, but actually talking about, on a very confidential basis, where they'd like the industry to be in 10, 20 years' time, uh, and having a joint discussion with the researchers about what kind of technologies or know-how which would, would enable that to happen and getting a long-term strategic uh, um, research underway to address that. Um, my own experience as a researcher has been that if you do have those long-term goals that you share with an industry, it can lead you into really exciting research areas. Well, I must say, I, I loved your emphasis on visionaries. I'm sure that's true. I think transformation can come from vision uh, rather than just process. But if I could just turn to process now, how do you plan to go about the review? Well, we've been tasked with a very challenging timescale by the Minister. Uh, we're to come up with some headline recommendations uh, in, uh, in mid-May in time for an incoming government and uh, uh, a comprehensive spending review. So, um, we, I've drawn together um, a, a steering group for the, for the study, and I must say they are a dream team. Um, I uh, drew up a list um, with uh, um, the Royal Academy of Engineering staff who is supporting me in this, and uh, just about everyone agreed to be on it. So that's, that's, that's fantastic. We've got a, we've got a great team. Um, we've, we've, we're calling for evidence, but in addition, we're running a series of workshops um, around the country and uh, with academics. We felt that the kind of information we want from industry isn't going to come out in a public um, forum. So the, the um, members of the work steering group have been tasked with doing individual interviews across a whole range of industrial sectors. So we're pulling evidence together. An awful lot of studies have been done in this area before, as indeed you will know, um, David, and we're not going to waste that. So we're, we're, we are going, pulling in um, ideas and recommendations from, um, um, from previous uh, studies. Um, I hope what's on our side is that this could be just the right time yeah. to make a difference. If we can come up with doable, concrete recommendations that look sensible and uh, win support. And you've built on Lambert and the Wilson Review. Yes, you're right. I mean, there's been a, a whole series of some excellent reports, and uh, that 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 is our our starting point. You know, we're taking all, all that in, and um, in some cases, um, inviting those who've written previous reports to come along and talk to the steering group as well as us studying those reports. We are currently doing a review of business university innovation in uh, Scotland. I'm assuming your review is not just England. That's right, it, 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 it's the, the whole of the UK. And uh, we, we plan to run workshops. Well, we've got a workshop in uh, next week in Wales, and, uh, and uh, we're also planning one in Scotland. And again, the, uh, the UK is represented in members of the steering group. But it's one of the interesting challenges is that, de that devolutionary politics go one way, as does indeed city region politics. And yet the, the things that you're talking about are of national scale, indeed international scale, and 10 and 20 years so that, there's an interesting dynamic uh, it is. That, the, that your report will have to reflect on. The whole of research is, is, is an international activity. And, and many of the companies, of course, could choose to do uh, their R&D anywhere in the world. So, it, as you say, the, the, um, uh, the, the competition is absolutely international. And that's where we've got to beat and win for the UK on that international front. Um, but it's got to fit the, the local um, scene. And uh, yes, cities and LEPs indeed can do a lot to, to foster these personal um, business university interactions in their local area. One of my, uh, just because of my background in digital media obsessions, is do we use the digital platforms sufficiently well? Um, and will you be looking at, at how you can use more online brokerage systems to solve some of the engagement issues with small companies? I think. Um, 
I think there's a lot that can be done digitally. But if you're going to build up the level of trust that is really necessary to share a long-term vision, that, that, that has to be a contact sport. Um, once you know people, much can be done through digital communications. But uh, building up that trust, I think, is still a very much a face-to-face -face, uh, matter. And uh, I know this is cheating, but do you have already in your mind two or three areas of recommendations that you might be oh, it's, particularly focusing on? It's a little bit too early to say. Um, but actually, from the way I've been talking, when emphasising that I think part of what we have to do is to bring industry and academics together in a in forum where they can have confidential discussions. And it all comes down to building that trust. So emphasis on people and how they can work together will be an important um, aspect that we'll need to cover. And finally, is there anything that the National Centre can do to help with the review? Absolutely. <laughs> Well, you've already done and, and produced some um, very influential um, uh, reports and um, we, we are inviting um, uh, people from the National Centre of Universities and Businesses to come along and, and talk to uh, the steering groups so that we can benefit from uh, your, uh, your experience. And also we'll, be, uh, um, we'll want to uh, tension our recommendations and, and bounce ideas off you as, as we get towards it. And we do want to make use of your networks as well, if we may, please. Absolutely. And thank you so much.